What is going on guys welcome back in today's video i'm going to show you how to build a simple mail checking tool in python so a tool that allows us to uh, look through our emails to check our emails and so on to receive emails because i have two videos already on this channel where i show you how to send emails how to build a simple uh, mail client that sends emails using smtp and today we're going to look at imap so how to receive emails uh, using python how to look through the emails that we already have um, and for this, of course, we're going to need a mail account. You're going to have, um, have to have an inbox. And for this video, I'm going to use this test account that I created on uh, neural9.com. So mail test at neural9.com. I have two emails here for myself already. We can write a couple of more emails. Um, and essentially, we're going to use that account. I'm going to delete it after this video. Uh, but I'm going to use this here because I didn't want to create a separate Gmail account for this video only. Uh, all we need to do here is we need to use imaplib and imaplib is uh, the same as smtplib part of the core python stack but instead of smtp it implements imap so what you need in order to receive uh, emails now to be honest i'm not sure what imap stands for but we can google that we can see what imap stands for it stands for internet message access protocol so smtp stands for simple mail transfer protocol and this is for access so we're accessing remote emails. I think there's also POP3, not sure what that stands for, but POP3 uh, stands for post office protocol. As far as I know, POP3 saves the emails locally and IMAP accesses them remotely. So we're going to use IMAP today for our script. And what we need to do here is we need to import IMAP lib. And we're also going to import email but we're going to need this later on just for a little thing in order to extract a message from the bytes um, but for the actual access we're only going to need imap lib so first of all we need to find out what the imap server is now i'm going to have a very special server because i i am using my own website obviously um, and i'm going to use the uh, the imap server off my provider but if you're using i don't know gmail or yahoo or something you're going to just google uh, what is the Gmail uh, the Gmail IMAP server? And then you're going to create a new uh, variable here, IMAP server equals, and I don't know what the Gmail server is, probably something like imap.gmail.com. In my case, it's imap.worldforyou.com. Then you're going to specify the email address, and this is, in my case, mail test at neural9.com and the password you can either store it in clear text or you can read it from a file um, in this case it's mail test one two three of course these credentials are not going to work anymore uh, once the video is online but you can enter your information you can encrypt it you can uh, ask for user input in order to do it never save passwords and clear text in a script i don't recommend that especially if it's an important password if it's something like that just a demo password doesn't really matter but if you have your real passwords anywhere on your computer in clear text that's not good so don't do that uh, it's probably best to ask for a user input so to basically say something like uh, password equals input enter your password or if you have a graphical user interface just get it from a text box but in this case i'm going to do it like that the unrecommended way so then what we need to do is we need to say imap equals imap lib dot imap um, actually imap for SSL because we're going to use the encrypted connection here. And usually the port for imap as far as I know is 993, but maybe it's a different port for your provider. Just look it up. So uh, usually it's 993. And we're going to pass here the imap server just like that. Um, and then this essentially means that we're now already um, connected to the server. We need to log in. So we have the information, we have the email address, we have the password, and we're connected to the server. And now the server is asking for credentials because in order to see my emails, I need to have uh, the access to them. So I need to log in. And for this, we're going to say IMAP login, and we're going to pass email address, password, like that. And if you can run this script without an exception, this should be fine. So I think if I, for example, pass one, two, three, I will probably get an exception. 
that my attempt was not successful. As you can see, authentication failed. So this is the correct password. You can try this out if you want to. And then you're going to see that it works or it doesn't work. Of course, it can also have different reasons. So if the authentication doesn't work, you're probably going to get something like that. If the server is not the correct server, you're going to get a different exception. Uh, but if everything works, it should just end the script without any errors. So once you're locked in, you need to select a uh, mailbox. So if you look into your mail account in the web, you're going to see, for example, in my account, I have inbox, I have drafts, I have send, I have junk, I have trash. Maybe you're going to have some specific directories or some specific uh, special folders. You need to specify the name that you want to look into, the, na the, the name of the mailbox you want to look into. And once you know that, you basically just say imap.select and inbox, for example. So I'm not sure if you're going to get an exception if the box does not exist. So if I try ABC, for example, if it's going to say not found, or if it's just going to be empty, I think it's just going to be empty, or it's going to give an exception later on. Uh, but you want to make sure that you specify a correct uh, mailbox. So once we have that, we can iterate over the messages inside of that mailbox. So in inbox, in this case, I have two messages here. I think in sent, I should have also two. Okay. Uh, we can change that later on. But now I have two messages and in order to iterate over these two messages, I need to first get them and I can get them with the search function. So I can say imap.search and the search function takes two parameters. First of all, the character set and second of all, the criteria for finding the mail. If you pass none for the character set, you don't specify any specific character set. And for the criteria, I'm just going to pass a string. And this string is going to be all, which basically means get all the emails. So we, we also have different parameters that we can pass here, uh, different criteria, so filtering or something, sp specific mails, but all basically means get all the emails. Uh, but we're not going to get the emails themselves, we're going to get uh, two parameters. The first one is, uh, what was the first one? I think the first one is just okay for uh, it worked success or something like that. And the second one is the message numbers. So message nums. Uh, and these message numbers are what we're going to use in order to iterate through the actual messages. So what we can do here is we can say, uh, actually, let's first of all, print the message numbers so we can see the format, because it's a little bit odd. Um, oh, very intelligent to print that with quotation marks. Uh, you can see that we have a list of a byte string, which uh, where the individual numbers are separated by white spaces. So in order to iterate through these numbers, what we need to do is we need to say for message number in and then message nums zero, because this is a list. And this here is the first element, the whole thing. And we're going to split this and then we're going to get the individual uh, message numbers. And what we do then is we fetch the data. So we use the fetch function of IMAP to get the actual emails. And this is done by saying underscore data underscore basically just means we don't need that really. So we can ignore it. Uh, underscore data equals IMAP dot fetch this respective message number. And in order to get the full message, so the entire message, we need to specify a code. Uh, standard and this is the RFC 822. This basically means fetch the whole message um, and the result is going to be stored in data. And I, I'm not sure right now, but I think this is just going to be again the success code or something. Um, so once we have that, we can get the actual message by saying email because let me just show you here what this looks like. The data. The data essentially is um, so we have two times data because we iterate, but data is essentially just a list where we have some things here, some bytes, uh, with certain return paths, with the content, with the timestamps and so on. It's not really readable for us, especially when we go down here. So what we want to do is we want to use the email module to make this more readable. And we can do that by saying message equals, and then email dot message from bytes. And we're not going to print the whole data, but we're going to take zero one. Uh, why are we going to do that? Because this is where the message is located. This is where the interesting part is. 
uh, and we're going to get this from the bytes that are stored there. We're going to create this message object and then we can extract from this message object the individual information. So we can print, for example, the email was from, or actually message number first, message number is, let's use an F string, message number is message number, and then we can say print, it's from someone. And this someone is message dot get from. Uh, actually, we need to use single quotations. There you go. And now I can copy this here and I can change from to to and I can change from to BCC. The usual stuff that you find in an email. Then the date. Um, and then we have subject and content. Let's do subject here and content is a little bit more complicated. I mean, not really, but it's not a one liner. So we're going to say content like that. And essentially, we're then going to say for part in message dot walk. So walk is basically a generator that yields all the part of the message. Uh, so all the parts of the message are yielded by this walk generator and we can iterate through that and get the individual parts and we can say if the part um we can get the content type oh if part dot get content type if this is text plain then we're going to print it as string part as string like that. And once we're done with that, we're going to close this connection again. So now you can see when I run this here, I get this email and I get this email. Now we can try to see what happens when I enter an inbox that does not exist or a mailbox. I'm not sure if we're going to get exceptions or if it's just going, oh yeah, we got an exception. Um, the search is not allowed because probably we don't have anything. So inbox works, I think sent works as well. There you go. And we will see the difference here. If we go ahead now and uh, write a new email to someone else. So to social at neural nine.com test mail, hello, test like that, send this. And now we're not going to get it in the inbox because we didn't send it to ourselves. But it's in the send directory. So I can now run this again with inbox. And you're going to see that we only have two emails. And we can now also run this with sent. And we should have at least three emails. There you go. Hello test. This is the one that we sent just right now. So this is how you build a simple mail checking tool in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.